So in order to code the Williams method, let's just quickly review one time what is involved. And then we're going to now discuss it not only from an algorithm standpoint, but also what it means from a code standpoint. So let's look over here. And I'll just arbitrarily create an array here with some numbers in it. It doesn't have to be a big one. And in the Williams method, what we do is we do successive insertion. So we're going to go from left to right, and we're going to insert into our heap here. So the first number we're going to insert is which number? Mr. Moises? Three. three. We're going to insert the three. And my question is, is that a valid heap? It is. So we're good there. Now, what's the next number we're going to insert here? Mr. Nikita? Seven. seven. Sir, where should I insert the seven? OK, I'm going to insert it here. And now I ask the question, is this a min heap? It is. So we're still good. Now we're going to insert the nine. Where should I insert the nine, Ms. Teleska? And Ms. Teleska, do I need to do any swapping at this point? No. OK. So now we're going to insert the one. Mr. Mariak, where do I insert the one? OK, Mr. Mariak, is it still a heap? OK, so what are we going to do, sir? You're going to have to heapify it. OK, we're going to heapify it. And what's the first swap we're going to do? The one and the seven. We're going to swap the one and the seven. Are, are we done now, Mr. Mariak? OK, what now, sir? Are we done now? Now, the next we're going to do is we're going to insert the two. Yes, sir? Uh, we do, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Uh, we, I should have been swapping all along as I've been going, but I'm going to talk about how we're going to do the swapping in a minute. So I'm sorry, where was I? We have to add the two still? Okay, so we're going to add the two, and do I need to do any swapping here? I just need to do one swap here. So there we go. Now, uh, Mr. Ar uh, Afsari mentioned that as I was swapping here, I should have been swapping here. Um, so I have some questions to ask you about this process. Did I ever check the value of a sibling, like a, a sister node? Did I ever care about the values of the sister nodes? No. So you can see that right here, that is one way that this process is easier than uh, build heap. Because build heap, when you're uh, th uh, bubbling stuff around, you sometimes have to check to see which path you need to go on. You don't have that here. So now. The questions that we need to ask ourselves is, what do we need in order to code this algorithm so that when we're moving it around here, we can move it around in the array, as Mr. Afsari has suggested? So you ask yourself, what utilities do I need? Like, if I need to do a swap, let's say I need to swap this with its parent, what kind of calculations do I need to do? Please discuss. Now, let's look at the indexes here for a second. What is the index of the root node? It's not 0. It's going to be 1 all the time. So if I write the indexes underneath here, and I tell you that I come to a situation where the item at index 4 needs to be swapped with its parent, how am I going to calculate? What do I need to calculate, and how do I calculate it? Yes, sir? I need to find the index of the parent. So one of the utilities you could have, you could either have this as a method or you could have it in line. It's so simple. But I'll write it as a method here. I'm going to say get parent index. And if I give it an integer index here like this, you discuss with your partner what is the method here that returns, what is the formula, mismila? Well, that was easy. If I ever needed to know the relationship between the parent and its two children, for example, if I needed to calculate the index of the left child of a particular index, let's say I give you the index is 3, and I want to know what is going to be the index of its left child and what's going to be the index of its right child, what are the formulas that we're going to use to do that? Please discuss with your partner. All right, Mr. Alfaro, sir, if I need the index of my left child, what's it going to be? 2i. And what's it going to be for the right child, sir? 2i. OK. Now, these are pretty much done. This one, I've omitted an edge case that's important. Please discuss what edge case do I need to handle. When the index is 1, there is no parent. We should probably throw an exception. 
And also, we'll also, just to be protective, we'll say if the index is, uh, uh, what other case should we just guard against just to be safe? Yes, sir. If it's 0 or negative, so it's less than or equal to 0, we'll just return a minus 1 also. You really should just throw an exception, but like I said, I'm just too tired. Okay, so that's basically what we need to code. These are going to be useful to you in your Williams coding method. Now, I should have put this into AutoGrader already, but I haven't yet. So I'm going to create a method. It, you can make it static. I give you an array, you give me an array back. The array that I give you has random numbers in it. The array you give me back has a heap in it. One other thing that I might have forgotten to mention previously is that when you build a heap using the Williams method and you build a heap during the, using the max heap method, do you usually get the same heap? What do you think? What do you think, sir? No. Generally speaking, you don't get the same heap, and that's okay. You can understand, right, that a bunch of numbers can create several heaps, right? They're still all valid. 